Hello, this is easy, and I'm going to be showing this macro I made. This macro will allow you to save this mesh with a low and high polygon mesh and polygon counts. And that will be done by Z remeshing it through this macro I'm going to be making. Um, there will be a link below the video. You can try this, and then you can download it and experiment with yourself. There are some do's and don'ts, so let me go ahead and give you some basic stuff, and we'll kind of get into some fundamentals here in a second. Um, I'm going to turn on the polyframes here, and if you look at the back of the leg here on this one here, um, it's kind of got a circle right here. I'm just going to use this as a reference because it's uh, the, the mesh here is in pretty good shape anyway, and we're going to see some changes, and I'm just going to use that as a reference. So... Uh, what we're going to do is we'll just turn this back off. Now, this macro, which will be located up here, and uh, we'll press Reload All Macros. I have this in a macro folder, and it's called the Easy HL. That means H for high, L for low. This macro works very well from a mesh that has medium polygon counts to high polygon counts. Where it might not work good is if it's extremely low or extremely high. So, like I said, between medium and high should work very well. Um, now, if I look at the mesh here, it's kind of boxy. So, um, this is kind of not what I want here. So, what you see is what you get when you Z remesh this. So, I'm going to go to geometry here, and I'm going to divide this once. And again, um, I'm at subdivision 3. If I divide it again, I probably won't see a whole lot of changes here. Um, but if I divide it again, this will make the macro run a little bit slower. So this is kind of a preference if you want to go ahead and divide this again or not. Okay, the most important thing when you're done. If you go over to the macro here and just hoover over the button here. It says make it a polymesh 3D before you start. Okay, we got everything almost ready here. And we must make it a polymesh 3D by pressing this button up here in the right hand corner. And if I press it, it's going to kill all the subdivision level. So I'll just go ahead and make that a polymesh 3D. And then we're ready to run the macro. Macro. Now, if we decide that we want to, let's say, run the uh, Z remesher guides here, we can do so at this time. You want to do it after you make it a polymesh 3, 3D. Um, do that after you make it a polymesh 3D and not before, it, else you'll end up losing the guides to it. That. Okay, uh, we got the, uh, we're looking at around 127,000 active points here. So let's go ahead and run this script here. So we'll go to the macro, and we're going to press this here. Now, I'm probably going to pause the video here for a second until it finishes. When you first run the script, you'll probably get this little pop-up here. We're just going to press always OK, and that usually just happens once. So we'll let it finish up. And now the script has finished. As you can see, now we have subdivision 5 here. And we're almost at 2 million. And we can set it all the way down to the lowest, which is around 8,000. We'll turn on polyframes here. And if you look at the back leg here, you can see where I was using as a reference for that little circle is now gone because this is a new mesh. Now, if we look at this mesh, what's good about the script is... Um, this script runs off projection, and a lot of times what happens when we're doing the uh, projection through the subtools here, and project, uh, a lot of times with this, it will have a tendency to spike things where they're not supposed to, like in the eyes, the ears, the ears will shrink up. This does a really good job from help preventing that. And one of the key factors, like I said, that will help this is make it a polymesh 3D. If you don't, you might end up getting these little spikes. Here I'll show you kind of something that you can do with it. Uh, just kind of tinkering around here. It might be interesting for you. We'll go ahead and uh, give it one more subdivision level here. We'll divide that. Make it a little bit smoother, and we're going to make it a polymesh 3D. Right, let's just center this up a little bit. I'm going to do a little mask here in the middle. And we'll just turn on polyframes here. And we're going to go down to 
poly groups and we're going to group for mask and I'm going to use let's say the B part body part uh, brush here press the M on the keyboard I'm going to select let's say select this leg here I want to set it in the center right here and drag out And if I decide that I want to move it a little bit, I can move it up. Then I'm going to hold the control key down and swipe twice so it will mess fusion in it. And we'll just turn off this polyframe here. Um, then I'm going to go ahead and use a smooth brush. I'm going to hold the shift key and start dragging just a little bit, then let off the shift key. Shift key. Drag a little bit, let off the shift key. Kind of like smart smooth here. I'm going to do one for here. As you can see, we have no subdivision levels, and it is a polymesh 3D. We can go ahead and use the guides right now if we want to, but by default, uh, this works pretty good. Now, there's a lot of settings that you can do through here before you press the uh, macro. Um, to the Z remesher, and this is something you're going to have to experiment and go through yourself. Okay, let me just go ahead and run this real quick with a macro, and we're going to go ahead and use the Easy HL, and I'm going to pause the video. As you can see, it has finished, and uh, I'm on subdivision five, which is my highest, and we can crank it all the way back down, and we got seven thousand. Let me go ahead and straighten this out a little bit here, so you can see a little bit better. And we'll turn this up a little bit. Um, I don't know if you all recall a while back ago, a lot of times when you uh, do the Z remesher or Z project, um, like behind the ears, it actually uh, a lot of times it will try connecting the ear to the back of the head anything that's really close it would try connecting it with this uh, macro this will help solve that and even with the toes as you can see these toes right here they're very close you can see that they didn't fuse together so this scripts um, help solve a lot of that last little tip before I go here um, I'm just going to show you, but um, I'm going to go ahead and leave this same character out here. It's probably best not to keep on using the macro on the same object. You only do it once. But anyway, for this little next step anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and do it anyway. But uh, Now, if you want to, you can go to the macro here, and uh, you can set up a hotkey for this right here. And here's one that I like that's really simple. Um, because I have a middle mouse wheel. What I'm going to do is hold the control and the alt key down Then I'm going to click the easy HL um, That's going to ask me to sign a hot key for it Okay, I'm going to let off both the keys and I'm going to use the scroll mouse wheel and I'm going to drag it down Now it's telling me that I had a sign a, a hot key for it. Now if you look to the right there, it says uh, mouse wheel down so anytime that I use the mouse wheel down, it will automatically use the macro. So if I, I'm going to go ahead and drag down on the middle mouse wheel, and then the script's going to run. Then you get something like this when it's finished. I had Paul Zed brushed and restarted it. Um, in the zip file below the video, um, there's going to be a README text, and it's going to show you where to place the macro at. It's just a text file and where to uh, place it in, in the ZBrush folder. Um, you, if you still don't understand it, just go ahead and Google it. I'm sure you can find somebody on YouTube or ZBrush Central, and I'll show you how to do it. All right, in this little last example here, I'm going to show you how to make this uh, one mesh. Uh, I'll give you a short description as I have the demo soldier 
and the dog. Um, I did this pretty earlier and um, appended it as a subtool. Then I deleted uh, the head on the dog and delete hidden. Um, we'll turn on polyframes as you can see. This is where I missed, you know, took the head off here and it's all separate. Well, I want to fuse this all together. <clears throat> for, um, so for to do this, I want to, you know, what you see is what you get when you use the macro. So if it's kind of boxy when I'm done, it's going to be boxy looking when it ends up Z remastering it. So what I want to do is I'm going to go to geometry and I'm going to divide this and maybe one more time. Make it kind of smooth because when I get done, this is what I'm going to get right here. We're going to make this polymesh 3D. And if we turn on the polyframes, you can see, you know, we still got their separate parts. Okay, now I want to fuse this as one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the dynamish here. And I really want to crank this up quite high. And uh, I'll just say 720. Then I'm going to press dynamesh. And we're going to pause the video for a second. You know, so it's already a dynamis. Uh, we turn the polyframes here. Uh, still poly group. We'll just uh, check that right there. And uh, what I'm going to do here is uh, I'll just go ahead. I probably don't have to make a polymesh 3D, but I'm just going to go ahead and make it one real quick. Turn on the X cemetery. And kind of where the seams are at, they're not bad. I'm just going to go ahead and do a little smoothing right here. I'm going to hold the shift key down. Let off. And it's going to make a nice little seam right here. Okay, I'm not going to get nothing too fancy. And we'll just finish it here. Maybe a little bit right here. And like I said, it's still, uh, it's got its poly groups here. But I am missing one thing here. And that is going to be my geometry. As you can see, I have no subdivision. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and run that script. We're going to go to the macro, and I'm just going to go ahead and reload all macro since I restarted ZBrush, and press the easy HF. And I'll pause the video. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, it's finished, and you can see it's subdivision levels. Turn the polyframe on. You can see it's all one group now. I pause the video one more time and start ZBrush and this is the final uh, ending here and just I uh, want to go over one more thing just to make sure it was understood um, okay we got the dog out here and uh, what we want to do is uh, we want to take our geometry divide them to kind of smooth and uh, we're going to be using the guides here um, we'll go to the Z here and the Z master guides and what we want to do is we don't want to do it now because uh, we're going to lose the uh, guides if I use the macro. So control Z that. What we want to do is make it a polymesh 3D. Then we use the guides however you want them. Then you use the macro and that'll be it. Thank you very much.